Now in an earlier video I said um, I would show you what I was going to do to this area here, this empty area. And, um, <clears throat> well, I made a grip. Uh, this is just a, a block of Macassar ebony. Um, I shaped it so that it would fit in here. Um, when you actually shape this, uh, if you're going to make a grip, there's a few things you have to do. Um, first is this channel. Um, there's a kind of ridge running along this front edge of the body and you have to obviously kind of carve out a chunk of your grip so that it will clear this edge here. There's also these um, kind of nipple bits here. Uh, you'll need to drill a hole or carve out the chunk to clear these as well. These were for the pivot and one of the screws for the uh, kind of end plate that was here before to hold the latch in. Now, my grip, I'll show you here. Um, this is basically yeah, just a brick of Macassar ebony um, carved to shape for my hand. Uh, here is a channel I routed out for the um, for the front here. That fits in there. I don't know what width it is. It's probably about maybe six or seven millimeters wide. Um, and so I just routed out the channel. Uh, and then these are the kind of holes, a bit messy, but um, they work. These are the kind of holes I drilled for the these two pieces here. And basically this will fit on like so. And uh, to secure it, now there's four, four screw holes for the original um, kind of cover plate that was here before. And... Um, you can use those if you can find a long version of the screw that they used originally. Now, it seems to be some sort of imperial size, and um, since I live in Japan, they don't really do imperial. They, they do metric mainly, so I couldn't actually find any um, like suitable screws, basically. So I had to do with something else. Uh, and what I did was the pivot holes um, they were unused, so I basically decided to use these instead. And what I did was I drilled and tapped three uh, three millimeter kind of threads, M3 threads, which is a metric three millimeter. And so drilled and tapped these two, and so I have some stainless steel uh, M3 cap bolts, and they will basically thread into those. And so this will hold on my grip. And obviously in my grip, I, I drilled in some aligning holes for these two here. So that when I mount it, I can have basically there's these two. And they will keep it in. So that's my grip. Now, an area you have to be careful of when you're actually designing your grip shape is uh, this edge here, which is the back. So if you're holding like this, this is the back end here. Now this has to clear... Um, this has to clear this end here of the Polaroid back. Now since the film actually comes out here, you have to make sure that this edge is not too high so it doesn't block the film coming out, obviously. And also, because you have to pull the white tab out first, then you should make sure that you can actually pull the white tab out as well. So, um, keep this low if you can. Um, to kind of help clearance for the white tabs, um, I carved a little kind of indent here. Uh, just to kind of let my fingers get in a bit more and so yeah but it's yeah just design it to your shape basically of your hand and yeah it will look like this in the end which looks a lot nicer than having the whole end just chopped off or what have you 
and it's actually useful. So, yeah, that's how I've solved the problem of uh, this end here. Now with the camera pretty much almost finished, uh, everything's all on and the rangefinder is all calibrated. The last, there's only a few more little things to do. Uh, one of them is to kind of make some contraption to secure this flap here. You need uh, a non-permanent solution for this because when you open up the Polaroid itself you need clearance. So um, you need some way to kind of open this and close it without permanently shutting it off. Uh, that's one problem and that's what I'll be doing in this video and there's also another sort of problem with the strap. Uh, you could replace it with the old strap. I decided to make a new one but um, uh, those two things plus the final thing you want to do is to check the light tightness of the actual everything, the whole system and that will be um, one of the final things that we do. So first off we want to make something to secure this door and what I've done is you can see here I've glued some little blocks of wood uh, epoxied them in and epoxied a, a steel plate on the top. Uh, this is so that uh, I got some neodymium ma magnets and these are embedded into another block of wood and this will epoxy into here in this chunk and so two magnets will kind of lock this shut. Uh, so that's what I'll be doing here. These are already epoxied in and cured, so these are solid. And um, I just need to epoxy in this side. So mix up some high strength epoxy. I got some here. And apply it. You can use trial and error just to place these things. Uh, depending on the strength of your magnet, uh, you want to place either closer or further from the plate. These are 3,700 Gauss neodymium magnets, uh, one centimeter in diameter by five millimeters thick. Um, so they're pretty strong. They have a two kilogram uh, force apparently. I don't know how they measure that, but that's what they say. 3,700 Gauss each. So I've got two of these. And let's the epoxy on there for one side. And this is the other one. I don't know where to put the epoxy on this one. This will do. So just smear some epoxy on. And press into place. This should be strong enough to hold everything. And there we go. So just wait for these to cure up. I've got some masking tape here prepared earlier to try and keep this all steady. I don't know how effective this masking tape is going to be, but anyway, so this is my door latch system, and so I'll leave that aside to cure.